Hey everyone, Tin Man here, and the day has finally arrived where we have the full official release of Dota Underlords, and with it comes new items, new units, new alliances, um, the new city crawl, like single player experience, and puzzles, and just all kinds of awesome new cosmetics as well, and we also got a sweet Dota Underlords Season 1 trailer. You can go watch this on YouTube, link is down in the description below. By the time that you are watching this, I will probably be live over on Twitch. I will be streaming all day today on this release day. You can go over and get Twitch drops, which are enabled if you link your Steam account with Twitch. Then you will be able to get some um, uh, like experience towards the Battle Pass and some other cool like little uh, rewards just for watching any stream on Twitch, whether it be mine or the official launch channel or anybody else. So make sure you go check that out. Link also down in the description below. With that in mind, let's get over to the patch notes. So Dota and Lords coming out of early access, and of course, we have got a ton of new stuff. First up is the City Crawl. So the City Crawl is going to be a sort of like single player campaign where you're going to have uh, like kind of quick uh, called street fights, like a little quick um, couple rounds, you versus like a, a pre-made scenario. Uh, there's in-game uh, challenges, in-game uh, puzzles. Or, or sorry, the challenges are kind of like the kind of like the daily quests uh, used to be, where it's just like you know do X things in a game um, and other kinds of like you know uh, objectives to get through the city crawl. There's going to be puzzles um, and just like all kinds of other uh, like ways of ranking. There's like going to be a leaderboard uh, among your friends uh, for like who can do the puzzles in the the most efficient way or the fastest time or some other little things. Uh, so a lot of awesome competition there. I'm really looking forward uh, to seeing how those puzzles uh, turn out because I think that's a really cool idea in this style of game. Uh, of course, there's going to be the battle pass. So uh, do make sure that you pick up the battle pass. I believe it's uh, 4 dollars for, for, uh, for about five US dollars. Um, the paid battle pass is not required to play the game. You can still play the game just normal, but it does provide a lot of cosmetics. It does support the developers. Of course, this is the very first monetization that has ever been in the game. Uh, it's never been uh, monetized before this, and it's been out, and I've played over a thousand hours in it so far without giving them penny. So I'm really excited to, uh, you know, finally be able to support the developers um, of this awesome game that has given me so many um, countless hours. And of course, there's going to be tons of rewards for getting the battle pass. Uh, you're going to get all the sweet cosmetics. Uh, I believe it uh, unlocks unlocks full access to the city crawl, so like you don't get all of the city crawl access without it. So do make sure you pick that up, and you can also get bonus rewards with that if you're watching over on Twitch, which you should go do right after watching this video. <clears throat> anyway, so let's get on to the actual gameplay changes. There's going to be some hero alliance and item changes, and um, the Scrappy and Inventor alliances we knew were going to be removed, and they're also going to be introducing the Summoner alliance, a new Vigilant alliance, and a Void alliance. So we already know a couple units in the game like Void Spirit and Faceless Void, which are uh, going to be part of that, as well as a couple other units. Um, and there's also a new item type called Hats. Of course, it wouldn't be a Valve game without Hats. Um, so let's get down to it. There's also a little uh, blurb here about returning players. Uh, if you play during the beta season, which I'm sure most people watching my channel have been, if you've been watching for a long time, um, you will get a little bit of bonuses for being uh, as part of Season 0, is what they call the Season 0 maps, and a Golden Ricky statue, a poster title as well. So that's really cool. We talked about that in our last video, uh, talking about the news ahead of time. Okay, actual gameplay changes. R item rounds. So first off, the item rounds are getting slightly adjusted. They used to be every five rounds, but we've kind of, they've kind of... Um, sped up the game over time with some other changes so they thought uh it seems like items weren't coming out quite as much so there's going to be a quicker pace of items every four rounds instead of every five so you get a little bit more items per game and then also you have the option to re-roll your items just once per round the uh the three choices that you have can be blacklisted so you won't get those three choices again and then you re-roll and you get a new choice so this should give you a little bit more control over the items you know it's not quite a full like um crafting system or anything like that where you have like infinite control but it does give you a little bit uh, better control and you get more items in, in this new uh, scheme so I, I do like that change to give you a bit you know better access to to the items that you want if there's specific ones for your strategy especially with the new hats that are looking to be kind of defining uh, items towards your build okay so this is uh, one change and I'm not the biggest fan of the ace effects have been removed from the game uh, that includes the bonus chances to find an ace unit as well as the ace bonuses themselves and this system is they're, they're going to reevaluate it and it'll return in, at some later date because um you know whenever the ace effects came out i think there was a lot of like um what's the deal with these 
and uh, over time, I think we we as a community kind of like got used to it. Like, oh yeah, there's aces, and and they're cool, uh, right? You know, a good idea. Um, but there's there was always been this kind of uh, like tension of you know what alliances have an ace and what don't. Okay, mages have an ace, but why don't warriors have an ace? Oh, knights get an ace and then they lost their ace. Why do hunters get it and not you know assassins? And then eventually assassins did get it, and it was always this kind of like, well, why do they get it and not me? And it created a little bit of a balancing problem. And like the solution to that is give everybody an ace, which would be. 26 aces i think there's 26 alliances in game um or give no one an ace um or just like have this weird balance where like the the alliance is balanced around you finding the ace but then if you don't find it because it's rare it's then underpowered or, or overpowered so i uh i i thought they the system was like okay as is but I can understand why they may think that um, it could be better implemented. I do like the idea of kind of like this capstone unit or like a, a powerful late game payoff. But I'm not sure that the aces as they were implemented was the right way of doing that. And this, removing that gives them a little bit more flexibility in terms of like what can be tier 5 and like how to balance the alliances and units around that rather than assuming that the ace effect would be in. And we've also had some problematic aces in the past like Disruptor when he was ace of warlocks was really problematic at some time so um you know this probably won't be the most popular of changes but i think it's it's done for you know a, a good reason and i think um if they're they're going to evaluate that and we can get some ideas and some feedback and maybe it opens up more possibilities for a better design later down the road okay uh poison the poison that comes from things like no and venomancer and orb of venom uh the healing direction has been increased on that so it'll be uh even a better counter against opposing healing strategies and also there's this beneficial cells uh concept that has kind of been in the game but it's always been a little bit buggy a little bit a weird cells that are marked as beneficial from an ability such as a drow ranger's precision aura knight's alliance bonus or a mango Ooh, i love mangoes uh more on that in just a bit and they should all be working now in all cases. Also, the uh, hero rotation, as we knew. Uh, we knew that these scrappy inventors were going out of the game, so most of the scrappies, um, alchemist, bounty hunter, clockwork, uh, so on, have been removed. But also Enchantress and Kunkka are two units that have been removed. Uh, these were not uh, scrappy nor inventors, but they did get removed as part of this uh, rotation. And in exchange, we got a bunch of new units into the game. Uh, well, maybe not uh, quite new units, but uh, ones that are coming back from, from a bit of a hiatus. So uh, Arc Warden is back in. Magnus, the, the old, uh, he used to be a, a brute and, uh, and a druid, I believe, or a brute savage. Um, anyway, he's now a, a druid savage. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Luna, the uh, the knights, the AoE knight, so that should be a big boost to knights' compositions. Wind Ranger, a powerful hunter. Marana, another powerful hunter. Tide Hunter, who's ironically not a hunter, he's a warrior. Uh, Enigma, Nature's Prophet, and Templar Assassin is coming back. So uh, no Phantom Assassin, uh, but we do get the Templar Assassin back. And of course, the following line has been removed. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we knew these were coming. Summoner, Vigilant, and Void coming in. And also they wrote out a couple items from the game, Aeon Disc and Healing Ward, which were just kind of two items that were like a cool concept, but never really found a lot of footing, and I never thought were like super useful, so I am A-OK -okay to see those ones gone and maybe reworked for the future. The following new items have been added to the game. There's a whole bunch of new items. Uh, there's nine on the list here. Uh, Armlet of Mordigian, Crown of Antlers, Dragon Lance, Cadence Blade, Legbreaker's Fedora, Mango Tree, Mantle of the Flayed Twins, Quilling Blade, and Restool Circlet. Look for an upcoming um, video discussing all of these items in much more detail, and we'll talk about them a little bit uh, down below. Underlord changes. So uh, the uh, Jull has been buffed a little bit. Barrels of Fun now cast at 12 seconds instead of 15. Happy Hour at 8 seconds instead of 10. Uh, Eno's attack rate has been slowed, so he attacks quite a bit slower now, um, from 8.33 attacks per second up to, uh, or wait, no, this is much faster, sorry, I got, you got it reversed, much faster attack speed, 1.4 attacks per second, I don't know why they go down to four or three decimal spots, but regardless, it's much faster attack speed out of Eno, but his, um, his damage has also been increased. That's interesting. So his attack damage has gone in, got to be increased. That's pretty powerful. Um, went from 70 minimum up to 90 minimum. And so on, I guess, 
yeah, at, at every level, it, it pretty much got stronger. And uh, but at all out attack, his his you know attacking ultimate is now quite a bit weaker the stun duration is down from two seconds down to 1.5 and instead of stacking five stacks of poison right away it only stacks two stacks of course the the poison has been buffed a little bit in terms of the healing direction but the damage output from this should be much lower and it'll be a little bit more focused on his auto attacks rather than the all-out attack big aoe hit everybody with a bunch of stacks of poison anymore Hero changes. So Arc Warden is back, but he is no longer quite as oppressive as he used to be. He used to be a tier 4 uh, unit, but now he's been changed down to tier 1. And he is now a Primordial Summoner instead of a Shaman, because the Shaman Alliance is not in the game. He now has mana. He will be able to accumulate mana. And whenever he gets to his maximum mana, he will cast Tempest Double, which makes a copy of himself with the same health that he currently has. That Tempest Double can also make Tempest Double copies which can also make Tempest double copies, which can also make Tempest double copies. And you can see how this summoner idea gets out of hand. So um, I'm a little concerned about this because last time we saw that Arc Warden clones could create more clones was whenever they also copied the item. And I believe they came out at uh, at full health or at like some, some larger health percentage. Now it comes with the same health that he currently has. So if somebody's, you know, beaten up an Arc Warden, uh, you, you're going... To, it, your Tempest double copies are not going to be full health and not going to be quite as scary. And that's fair for a, a one costume. I'm really looking forward to playing with him and seeing uh, how many Tempest doubles you can pump out. If you get a um, like humans to give a bunch of mana gain or something along those lines, should be really cool. Axe. Axe has been changed from tier 1 all the way up to tier 5. He is now a monster truck. Obviously his stats get buffed through the roof. He now has 3,000 HP and 15 armor as a baseline at tier 5. He no longer has Berserker's Call, instead he has Counter Helix. Whenever Axe is attacked, he has a uh, about a 20%-ish chance to uh, do a Counter Helix, which will deal 50, 100, or 150 pure damage to all enemies directly adjacent to him. And then, if he attacks a target below 25% health, he dunks on them and instantly kills them with his Axe, as appropriate. Uh, that seems really strong. Uh, this guy just seems like a big Mack truck. 3,000 HP, 15 armor is so tanky. Plus, you know, damage output from Counter Helix, just executing with Culling Blade. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to play with Axe. This sounds sweet. Next up, Bristleback. Bristleback has been moved from tier two or tier four down to tier two, so now he's much more accessible in the early game. But of course, his uh, stats have been cut rather dramatically to uh, make up for that. His his baseline like uh, attack and health is is a little bit weaker. It's not that much weaker, but his quill spray now deals about half as much damage as it used to. Uh, base damage, I guess, it went from sixty or from forty down to twenty. And then the this bonus stacks, yeah. The quill spray deals about half as much damage as it used to. Um, but you know, getting access to Bristleback so much earlier is really strong to empower some brawny strategies. So I'm really looking forward to trying some brawnies with Bristleback and then building into Axe in the late game uh, when he already has tons of brawny kills stacked up. Broodmother, she no longer does her spin web. Instead, she spawns spiderlings. And Broodmother will inject her young into an enemy unit, dealing 150, 250, or 350 damage. If the target is killed, then spiderlings will hatch out. Uh, spiderlings are untargetable units. They're the ones that you get with the Insect Alliance. So she's still a warlock, and she's now going to be dealing damage as a warlock is, you know, kind of supposed to do. And then she also gets to summon some spiderlings if she kills it. So this is a really good addition. I always thought the spin web was kind of a weird ability to have on warlocks with the warlock alliance being, you know, healing for damage dealt, and she didn't deal any damage with her ability. Now she does uh, an appropriate change, I do believe. Crystal Maiden has been changed from tier 2 down to tier 1, so now another tier 1 mage, and uh, her maximum health has been nerfed a little bit, and so is the Frostbite duration has been brought down by one second. But the ease of access to her up to 2 star now should more than make up for that, and I think she'll be, you know, a pretty reasonable start for most mage comps. She was always a little lackluster as a 2 star unit, or 2 cost unit rather. Now in tier 1, uh, should be much more appealing to pick that up. Disruptor, no longer an AC, is now a tier 4 unit, and... Uh, he still has the same effect, but his HP gets nerfed a little bit. This is another really big buff to Brawnies. Disruptor still being a Brawny, and of course with Bristleback moving down earlier, I really think Brawny is going to be a, a big popular strategy in this patch.
Dragon Knight, on the other hand, one of the most ubiquitous units in all kinds of different compositions, has been nerfed, essentially, moving from Tier 4 up to Tier 5, so he's now uh, much rarer, much harder to find. Uh, Three-star Dragon Knight's almost certainly never going to be a thing anymore, um, but and even two-star is going to be hard to find. He did get some compensation buffs. His uh, attack damage went up a little bit, but really it's not much. Um, and so I think Dragon Knight's going to be a little less commonly played. Obviously, he's not uh, nearly as easy to get up to two star to make that to make him a big carry in the in the mid to late game. It's going to be like the super late game before you can ever get him a two star. And by that point, I don't know if he's going to carry quite as hard as some of the other tier five units. Drow Ranger has now been added to the Vigilant Alliance. We'll talk about that in just a bit. Enigma comes back to the hero roster. He is no longer an ace unit. He is a tier three unit. And instead of being a shaman, he is now a void. Makes sense. He's a void uh, elemental kind of guy. Void primordial. Maximum health has been nerfed to compensate for being a tier 3 unit. And uh, the Midnight Pulse ability now will target the enemy with the highest maximum health. So no longer just like randomly targeting it off in the corner. It's going to be against the highest health opponent unit, opposing unit. And it will slow um, enemies within that area by 80%. So they're going to be kind of stuck in that Midnight Pulse for a little bit. And then it will deal maximum of, uh, or it'll deal percentage of their maximum health per second as pure damage. And uh, you can read the percentages here. It's it still seems pretty strong. Um, you know, every uh, it'll deal like some percentage of their max health to everybody within that. Like it's a three by three area, so it can really affect a lot of opponents. And it's pure damage, so it's really good counter to tanky units and especially to brawnies, which, as I said, I think are going to be pretty popular in this coming patch. So I like Enigma coming back. He's much more accessible at tier three than he ever was at ace, and he was like a really powerful effect at ace. And so even though the um, the numbers are, are a little bit different. It's a it's a shorter duration, but it's a higher percentage. So actually it's, you know, if somebody stays in the full duration at, at a one star Enigma, it'll deal 20% of their max health. And if they stay in the full duration at two star, it'll deal 35% of their max health. So it's, it's some reasonable damage. It's not like, um, absolutely going to shred them to pieces, but it, it's, it's a good effect. So I, I'm really looking forward to playing Enigma. Uh, Faceless Void uh, has obviously been changed. Instead of Primordial, he has now a Void. Makes sense. That's in his name. Uh, Lone Druid is a Savage Druid Summoner now. So he's just got a straight buff now being added to the Summoner Alliance, which we'll get to the new alliances in just a moment. Luna is back. Instead of being elusive, she is now a Vigilant. Lycan uh, is no longer a Hunter and has become a Summoner. And now he will once again summon his wolves when he uh, shapeshifts. So he gets a little bit of a nerf in terms of the health percentage and crit strike chance when he transforms, but now he gets his wolves back, uh, which will obviously benefit from the summoners and they're just really powerful. So I still think Lycan's gonna be a great unit in a lot of cases. Magnus uh, is coming back. He's no longer, he's now a tier one unit. And instead of being a shaman, oh, he's a shaman brute before. Now he's a savage druid. So a big change from him. Savage Druid, which sounds like he pairs really well with something like Lone Druid. You know, with Lone Druid plus Magnus, you get two Savages and two Druids. Just anytime there's units that have the exact same alliances, they always are going to be a great pairing. So Magnus uh, sounds really good just from an alliance perspective. And he's still pretty tanky with a lot of health for a tier one unit. So I, I like Magnus a lot just on paper from this. Medusa, her split shots have uh, been nerfed a little bit. Uh, she was pretty strong. So she's just going to get two split shots no matter what, what level she's at. Mirana is back. Instead of being Elusive Hunter, she is a Vigilant Hunter. It seems like Elusive just got pretty much straight ported over to Vigilant. Uh, Nature's Prophet, he is a now a Druid Summoner. So Nature's Prophet also goes really well with Lone Druid, who is a Savage Druid Summoner. Um, so Lone Druid plus Nature's Prophet makes two Druids, two Summoners. And uh, he no longer does a nature's call, he does summon lesser treants as expected. Now, uh, assuming these are still roughly the same stats as before, uh, I thought these treants were a little bit weak, but maybe with the uh, summoner alliance he'll make sense. And he does have really good alliances, Druid and Summoner is pretty good, so um, looking forward to playing with him. Necrophos. Uh, Necrophos is now a warlock in addition to being a heartless healer, so he's a heartless warlock healer. And his heal amount has been nerfed a lot. Um, the amount of that he heals is down, it used to be 100, 175, 250, and now it's only 50, 75, 100. It heals so little, but the main value in this death pulse though is going to be the damage output and also triggering the warlock link. So 
It's a buff in the sense that he's now a warlock again, which last time he was a warlock, he was like the best unit in the game. Now he got given the warlock again, but he got his heal amount nerfed quite a bit. So I think that's overall, it's kind of like a, I think it's a, it's a net buff because warlock is so powerful. And just having any unit that has three tags is so powerful, um, but it does hurt to lose so much healing out of that. So you're going to have to focus more on the Warlock part and less on the just natural healing from Death Pulse. Sand King has been moved up to tier 5. He gained some health and compensation. His damage and stun from Burrow Strike has gone up by a little bit, and the stun's gone up to 2.5 seconds. Um... I'm not a big fan of this change. I thought Sand King was already like a touch underwhelming as a tier 4 unit, certainly compared to some of the other ones. Um, so now it's going to be even harder to get him up to like 2 star, but I guess still at just 1 star, he's probably fine as an ace unit, or not an ace unit anymore, it's a tier 5 unit. That's a 2.5 second stun is pretty big, and it deals you know reasonable damage just at tier 1, so I'll, I'll be willing to give this a pass. Uh, Shadow Shaman has uh, is no longer a druid, he is uh, no longer a shaman either, because shamans are gone. And he's up to tier 3. Instead of being a troll druid, he's now a troll summoner, and he's going to be summoning serpent wards instead of hexing. And the serpent wards are going to target an enemy unit, and it's going to summon up to four serpent wards, uh, like orthogonally adjacent to them, to kind of trap them in by these serpent wards uh, that are going to be summoned units, of course, so they benefit from a summoner alliance, and they're just going to be uh, attacking. So that's pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool effect. It, it does... Um, I don't, you know, I haven't tested this out, so we'll have to see how how strong this is. But I like the idea, just to uh, to trap somebody in with these uh, serpent wards. All right, Snapfire. Uh, obviously, Inventors have been removed, but Snapfire is still in here. She is now a brawny dragon, so another buff to brawnies. Man, I'm really looking forward to playing some brawnies uh, with Snapfire here. She can rack up a lot of kills early, especially with Mortimer kisses. Uh, so can Bristleback, so can Beastmaster. So yeah, brawnies looking really appealing based on these patch notes. Templar Assassin is back, and as expected, she is a Vigilant Assassin now, but she's also a Void as well, so she's going to benefit from the Void Alliance. Tidehunter is back, and it doesn't give any details here, but Tidehunter is a Tier 4 Warrior who casts Ravage, which does uh, a stun uh, against opponents right nearby him. So he's pretty tanky, uh, he's also a scaled, scaled Warrior, and he was just so powerful, and uh, whenever he was last in the meta or in the game, he was like very often one of the most popular units that just everybody would always try to play. He was so good and so popular. Uh, really looking forward to trying him again. Of course, we lost Kunkka, so kind of that four cost warrior stun role has been replaced um, as Tidehunter wins this stage of the fight in his eternal battle against Admiral Kunkka. Venomancer uh, Alliance changed from Savage Warlock Scaled over to Scaled Summoner. So this seems like a pretty big nerf because Savage and Warlocks were great alliances for Venomancer, and now he is uh, getting that replaced with Summoner, which is, you know, a good alliance, but Savage and Warlock were like a big part of the appeal for Venomancer. Of course, instead of Poisonous Gale, or Venomous Gale now, he's going to have Poison Sting. Each of his, his attacks apply a stack of poison to the target, so he's a very good kind of anti-healing unit. He's just going to stack up poison and cut down their healing. And then he also summons Plague Wards, as expected from being a summoner. And the Plague Wards also stack up poison on their target, so he is a, a good... Um, poison dealer and also is going to to cut down their healing and is a good summoner although he does not fit nearly as well into most of the comps that he used to fit into with savage and warlock so this is like a big rework of venomancer so uh, we'll have to see how that all plays out um viper the corrosive skin uh instead of a dealing damage of time corrosive skin now applies a stack of poison to viper's attackers makes a ton of sense uh, so it should, that should probably hit a little bit weaker than Corrosive Skin used to, at least on the first initial attacks. I haven't done the math right now. Um, so I think it's a net nerf just a little bit, but it does give him um, a, a kind of good uh, like anti-healing capabilities because Poison will cut down on the healing that the that unit receives. Void Spirit uh, changed from Ace down to Tier 4, and as expected, he is now a Void Spirit. <laughs> That's his alliances. <laughs> Void Spirit. That was like the easiest alliance thing you ever had to assign. I imagine like how the meeting went and it's like, all right, we need a new alliance for Void Spirit. I don't know. What about Void and uh, Spirit Alliance? Perfect. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, so Void Spirit is a, is a Void Spirit. Weaver. Down to tier one. That's a pretty big buff to him. Uh, his damage got cut a little bit, as expected, for going down to tier one. And, of course, he's no longer scrapper, scrappy, but he's still an insect hunter. 
Uh, so this should make insects really accessible. You've got Nyx Assassin and Weaver both in tier one. So like starting off with two insects is going to be pretty common. Um, I'm not sure how much I like that because insects very early on in the game are very strong. So definitely look to pick up Weaver in the early game along with Nyx Assassin to get a strong insect start uh, being in tier one. I think that's that's going to be a powerful early game strategy along with things like brawnies and, and even druids are, seem really accessible in the early game now. Wind Ranger is also coming back, and as expected, she is a Vigilant Hunter. Okay, on to the items. And now I'm going to go a little bit faster through these items because I do have a... Uh, I plan on making a full video uh, about these item guides, but just to give you the highlights here. We've got Big Time Contract has been renamed as Ogre Cap, and uh, these are the hats that are going to change alliances, so the equipped hero will become a Bloodbound, as expected. Armlet of Mordigian is a tier 2 offensive item, which gives you a massive attack damage bonus, plus 90 attack damage and plus 10 armor. But of course, then the equipped hero will lose 100 health per second. So that's a pretty big drawback, and it's probably best going to be on units that can like heal themselves or attack very fast to, um, to kind of make good use of this while they're still alive. Barricade has moved down uh, from tier 3 down to tier 2. Uh, you still get 3 barricades, but the health has been slightly nerfed. Crown of Antlers is a tier three hat that makes the unit a hunter. Now that's gonna make hunter comps a lot more flexible if you can get this item and you can just like fit more hunters into your composition uh, or different builds with Crown of Antlers. Uh, next up, uh, Dragon Lance, a tier two offensive item. It is a ranged only item. Will give plus 20 attack damage. And then the equipped unit will have unlimited range. They can attack on anywhere on the board. Um, yeah, that item seems really cool on like some of the short ranged, uh, range units. They can just sit in the back and just like always hit anywhere. They never need to move just kind of like how Sniper used to. Um, so I'm curious to see how that plays out for just a tier two item. It's a relatively low investment to get the kind of effect. Hand of Midas has been nerfed up to uh, tier three. It was always like one of the most powerful tier two items. So I'm kind of okay with that, but now it seems a touch weak for tier three items, especially if you're going to be getting the gold generation later on in the game. Caden's Blade is a tier 4 offensive item. Instead of their normal attack damage, equipped heroes' attacks will deal 7% of the target's maximum health as pure damage. So this is a really good counter to tanky units, just like Enigma would be when, when we're talking about percentage of max health as pure damage. Uh, also really good against brawnies. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this um, in like hunters who attack very fast and can burn through uh, like a big tanky brawny opponent or a big tanky like warrior or knight. Uh, I think it's a good addition to the game to kind of provide a check to those type of strategies. 7% max health though sounds a little bit weak against um, some non-tanky strategies. So if you're not going up against one of those, this might be a little bit of a weaker option. Leg Breakers Fedora is a wonderful named item that makes, it's a tier 3 hat that gives equipped hero, uh, uh, makes them a brute. And Brutes is like a, now very splashable with this. I don't know how often you're really going to want to use this to make up to like 4 brutes. Uh, maybe, maybe you would, uh, but because brutes only require two units, it's probably going to make it very easy to like say, oh, I just have like one tree ant protector, and then you give this brute to somebody else. And a uh, cool thing here is it can actually go on ranged units, and now you can have a ranged brute, which is something we haven't seen in the game yet. So it sounds pretty powerful. Uh, we'll have to see how that, that plays out though. Mango, th mango tree, a tier 3 contraption. At the start of combat and then every 2 seconds afterwards, the mango tree throws a mango up to 2 cells away. Any unit that touches the mango will eat it to gain 50 mana and 100 health. So this sounds like really cool with like backliners, like you stack this in the back and then you're just like, it's just like a mana battery for your units and also a little bit of healing as well. Um, it does say any unit though, so like opponents can jump in and steal your mangoes so you want to be protective of your mango tree to make sure that only your units are eating those um those sweet sweet fruits mantle of the flayed twins a tier two hat item that makes the equipped hero a dead eye and dead eye is just a one unit alliance now since obviously sniper and gyrocopter have been removed and it'll, it still says the same thing the dead eyes will focus their attacks on the lowest health target Quelling Blade, a tier 2 offensive item, uh, plus 25 attack damage. The equipped hero will prefer to attack summoned units. Attacks against summoned units will crit for 200% damage. So this is a good counter to summoner strategies, which I'm sure are going to be very popular here uh, with the new summoner alliance introduced. So if you're seeing a lot of opponents on summoners, make sure you pick up a Quelling Blade to help slice through them. Restool Circuit, a, uh, or circlet, a tier 3 hat that makes the equipped hero a demon. Oh, I am really looking forward to this one. Um, 
if you've ever played with like a Nessix and, and, and Thrall, you know that making just a, a unit into a demon, if you ever got like a, a Weaver into a demon that casts very fast and attacks pretty hard, um, give, making something a demon is a really powerful effect. Uh, so I think this one has a big potential to be busted on a lot of different units. Uh, target buddy, a tier two, or tier, um, sorry, tier has been changed from tier three down to tier two, and the armor and health has been slightly nerfed. So we're gonna see a little bit more target buddies uh, now that they come a little bit earlier and they're competing against uh, kind of less powerful items. So I thought target buddy was great when he was popular at tier two, and then he got nerfed to tier three and you like pretty much never saw him again. So uh, I like that change a lot. Okay, onto the alliance changes. We are almost through here. Uh, Bloodbound Alliance. Instead of giving plus one hundred twenty-five percent attack damage to a um, to to a, a random Bloodbound unit when when they die, it will now give all Bloodbound units a flat one hundred and twenty-five attack damage. So this is going to reintroduce the concept of like spamming a bunch of um, Bloodbounds, a lot of Ogre Magi, a lot of Bloodseekers to. Um, to buff them all up, but it doesn't scale quite as crazy with things like Legion Commander anymore because you don't get the percentage bonus, you just get a flat amount. It still sounds pretty strong, especially in the early and mid game, uh, but it won't be quite as busted on Legion Commander anymore. Uh, brawny, summoned units count as 0.25 of a kill for purpose of the Brawny maximum health bonus. That's probably an acceptable nerf based on how many summoners are going to be out there. Uh, you know, uh, just racking up free kills on all like the, the plague wards and uh, uh, serpent wards and things like that would be a little bit busted. I still think Bronies look pretty good though. Dead Eye units is now a one unit alliance as we mentioned before. Healers, uh, instead of being a three unit alliance, is now down to a two slash four unit alliance and it will buff by healing by 25 or 50 percent. And this is a great change because healers at three were just so hard to make work and so rare that they were actually good. Uh, or like a, a viable option. So making it just require two units should make it much more accessible into a lot of different compositions. Uh, knights have been uh, slightly nerfed uh, back down to a bit more round numbers. Instead of 15, 22, and 28, it's 15, 20, and 25% damage reduction. Savages have been slightly adjusted. Instead of giving uh, savage units plus five, 10, or 20 attack damage each time they attack or cast a spell, now it'll say, all allied savage units will gain plus six attack damage per attack. Or if you have four savages, all allied units, or heroes rather, all allied heroes will gain plus eight attack damage per attack. Or if you get up to six savages, then all units, including all of your summons, will gain 10 attack damage per attack. So, wow. I like this kind of differentiation between like you get differences in kind. Um, not just It's not just a flat damage increase or, or percentage increase. I mean, it is a damage increase, but it changes the way it works as you get more of them. And I like that change a lot. I think this sounds really cool. Um, and I can't wait to try a six savages with all allied units and just spamming out a bunch of summons that all ramp up 10 attack damage each attack. That sounds really fun. Summoner, uh, of course, this is why they put the new alliances at the very at the bottom. Uh, I don't know, but I'm just reading the patch notes as is. So Summoner Alliance now requires two or four summoners, and allied summon units will gain plus 20% or plus 40% damage. So obviously playing into that summon uh, strategy. But important note, summoned units will include things like a Nessix Companion. They'll include things like the Spiderlings from the Insect Alliance, um, as well as things like Eidolons from the Primordial Alliance when they die, as well as the expected summoned units like Lone Druid's Bear and Treants um, from Nature's Prophet and so on. Vigilant Alliance uh, requires two or four. Whenever an enemy unit casts a spell, either if you have two Vigilant units, then all of your allied Vigilant units will target that enemy if it's within their range. But if you have all four Vigilance, then every one of your allied units will target an enemy who just cast a spell if it's within their range. So this is like really good about like the focus fire strategy. Oh, you just cast a spell? Why don't I just like get everybody to focus on you and kill you off right away so they don't get to get much benefit right afterwards. I think it's really cool, especially with hunters because a lot of the Vigilant units are hunters to help with that focus fire idea. And they've got pretty long range, so a lot of them will be able to bring in that focus fire whenever an opponent casts a spell. And finally, we have the Void. Uh, it requires three units in the Void. 
And then once you complete it, all allied heroes have a 40% chance to deal an additional 5% of the target's max health as pure damage whenever you make an attack. So this is going to pair really well um, with any strategy that's attacking a lot, and it's really good against opposing tanky units because it deals maximum health as pure damage, same with Caden's Blade as talked about before. Um, so, wow. That's a big, that's a lot of changes. A lot to process here. So um, go, head on over to Twitch. Um, I will be uh, streaming over there for all day, talking about these changes and playing games and doing all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and also uh, just stay tuned to this channel. I'll be putting out a lot of guides, uh, talking about my thoughts on these changes and giving you some ideas for new builds and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So thank you so very much for watching. I am really excited. And now just go get in the game and start playing with this and let me know what you think about this patch down in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.